All right. <clears throat> the last thing we want you to do with your graphs is to add uh, error bars that represent our standard deviation. So these lines and dots represent just the average values um, from our class observations. But they don't represent um, how variable our observations were, right? We, we can't tell from this um, whether we made one observation or 10 observations and, and were those observations pretty close to the same thing or were they wildly different? Well, that's, that's really hard to tell from this. So that's why we need to add in these error bars so that we can represent the uncertainty, right? The, the variability around um, the average. So I'll start with malachite green here. I'm gonna click on the malachite green black circles, right? And I'm gonna go up to um, chart layout again and I'm going to select uh, error bars, right? And currently we don't have any error bars, but we want to add error bars um, that represent the standard deviation that you've calculated. So you spent um, you know, a lot of time calculating the standard deviation, so we want to uh, you know, make sure that you're using it as much as possible. So we're going to select the custom option and we're going to specify the value. Okay, So <clears throat> the positive error value is for the, the bar that goes up and the negative error value is for the bar that goes down. And so now you'll scroll back over to our, our table data here, our table of calculations and um, for the positive, I'm gonna I'm gonna select the malachite green standard deviation, all of the values there. And for the negative, um, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, right? So we're gonna show the standard deviation above and below our average. I'm gonna click OK and OK again, and you can see that. I've got these, these standard deviation bars here. All right. Okay, I'm gonna do um, the exact same thing for potassium permanganate, okay? Um, so for potassium permanganate, I'll go up to, uh, I'll, starting over, I'll click on the, the white circles um, so that they're highlighted. Then I'll go up to chart layout, over to error bars down to error bar options, and it might look a little different on your computers, but um, you get the idea here that under error bar options, you're gonna have um, these custom, this custom option, and you're gonna specify the value. And the values you're gonna specify are the standard deviation again, right? So. There we go, that one, and that one, all right. So same thing in, in both boxes, and I click OK and OK. Let's see, did it come through? It did, so I've got error bars for both um, potassium permanganate and malachite green, okay. Um, when I did that, you can see that it actually did something funny to the y, or I'm sorry, the x-axis here, and that happens once in a while. Um, and and we can fix this, this take away this negative 10 because it, it just doesn't look nice. Um, so the way to do that is actually to go back up to, um, whoops, I'm sorry, first click on your chart so it's highlighted, then go up to Chart Layout, and again under Axis, um, we fixed the vertical, but now we can, we can also fix the horizontal axis. So this again is just good practice, instead of starting at 10, negative 10, we can just tell Excel, no, we'd really like to start at zero with this one. And um, 
it should look like this now for you, which is really great. The other thing that, that happens sometimes when you make these error bars is not only will you get the vertical ones, but you'll also get horizontal error bars. And to get rid of those, you can click on them. Um, you might have to zoom in, but you can click on them and then just push delete or backspace and, and it will get rid of them. All right, last but not least, um, when I click over here, you can see that this this graph actually has a border to it and I'd like to get rid of that border. So what I'm gonna do is um, click on my chart and then right click in the white space somewhere um, and then format the chart area. And in here, um, I can I can tell it not to have a line. So I just, I, I don't want a line, a border around my chart. And so now you can see that that border is gone. All right, and so what we're left with here is a publication quality figure that I'm going to copy and paste into um, my Word document. So I'll um, just click on the chart and then um, go up to, so that it's highlighted, and then go up to Edit, Copy. So I, I copied it. And back over to um, oops, our, oops, I got this old one in here, sorry. Our um, Word file. And you can see we, we already put our table in. So now we're going to put our graph in. So I just clicked Paste. Let me do that again just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so under Edit, I can put Paste, push, uh, select Paste, and you can see I've got this, this graph in there now, all ready to go. Um, the title for the graph is um, Figure. All, all graphs or charts or um, all graphs or charts have the same name, Figure, and this is our first one, so it's going to be Figure 1. And then I'll add a descriptive title. And when you're writing your paper, you'll have to come up with that descriptive title. And the, the term figure one should be in bold. All right, so that's it. That's how you make a, a table and format it correctly um, with the analysis of our, our data in there. And then how, how to make a graph of that data um, that represents not only the averages, but also um, the standard deviation, um, the uncertainty, right, in our data sets. And so you can see here with our graph that there actually is really relatively very small error bars. And um, the error bars for potassium permanganate and malachite green don't actually overlap, which is good. There's a there's a separation here which uh, reinforces the idea that there is a significant difference between these data sets, right? They're, they're actually separate from one another. The potassium permanganate data and the malachite green data are not overlapping, which is very cool. All right, well, that should definitely get you started. Um, that's all you need to do for experiment one, but using the same method, you should be able to create tables and a graph for experiment two of the osmosis and diffusion lab. Okay, thanks, bye.